Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to five player game, Horrified, designed by Prospero Hall and published by Ravensburger, who helped sponsor this video. Dracula, the Wolfman, the Mummy, and other horrifying creatures are terrorizing the streets of your village, and only you and your ragtag band of heroes can stop them. So, join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, you'll begin by unfolding and placing the game board in the center of the play area. Near the top, you'll find this terror track, and on the zero space, place the terror marker. By the board, place the 10 villager pieces. These go into stands and can be identified by their gray backgrounds. Also set the dice nearby along with the monster and perk decks separated by their backs and shuffled into their own face down piles. From the six included monsters, pick which ones you wish to play against. For a standard game, you pick any three. For a challenging game, any four. And for a novice game, any two. In your first game, they recommend choosing Dracula and the creature from the Black Lagoon. But keep one of the other monsters temporarily, flipping it over, and return the others back to the box. Each monster has a frenzy value here, and you'll set their mats by the board in frenzy order from lowest to highest and then place this frenzied marker on the one with the lowest value. Each monster has unique setup instructions which are outlined on the back of any one of the monster mats. You'll follow these steps for the monsters you're using, so I'll walk you through the ones for the creature from the Black Lagoon and Dracula. For the creature, you'll find this boat marker and place it on the X-labeled start at the bottom of its sheet. Next, find and place the camp token over the camp location and set the creature onto the lagoon space. For Dracula, you'll need to find the four coffin tokens, ensuring that the side showing a six is face up. You'll then place one of these on each of the four spaces of the board named here at the bottom of his monster sheet. So one will go into the cave here, another into the dungeon, one also goes into the graveyard, and the last one goes into the crypt, which is where you'll also place Dracula himself. Now mix up these hero badges and give one at random to each player, returning the rest to the box. In this video, we're going to set up a two-player game. Each person should also collect a reference card and the hero marker for their character, which they'll place on the board in the location indicated at the bottom of their badge. For our two heroes, that puts the scientist at the institute and the archaeologist at the docks. Each player is now dealt a perk card from the deck, and they'll place this face up in front of themselves. Finally, mix all 60 item tokens into this bag, and then draw 12 out at random, placing each one into the space indicated on the bottom of its token. This one says laboratory, so it would go here. It will look something like this when you're done, and then you can place the bag beside the board. And that's the setup. In Horrified, the players will be working together to defeat the monsters that are harassing the village. But each monster has something unique you have to do to defeat it. For example, with Dracula, you have to smash all of his coffins. With the creature, you need to find his hidden lair. If you were playing with Frankenstein and the Bride, it would add their two monsters to the board, which you must then keep apart until you can teach them what it means to be human, so that when they do meet, they can live peacefully together. So as I said, each monster is quite different, and every combination of them that you face will provide you with unique challenges. The game is played over a series of turns, starting with the player who last ate garlic. Or you can just choose a player randomly, and then you'll take turns clockwise around and around the table. And on your turn, you'll perform two phases, starting with the hero phase. Here, you will take a number of actions, as indicated by the value at the top of your badge. For most characters, this will be four, but you can always perform fewer if you'd like. And all of the types of actions that can be taken are listed on your player reference, and you can perform them in any order and even repeat the same one multiple times. So let's go through how each of these work, starting with moving. With each move action you take, your hero can go from one space to another that is connected by a lit path. You'll also find water spaces and paths on the board, but no figure can travel those except for the creature, as we'll see later. Now, speaking of monsters, these do not affect movement. You can freely move into and out of spaces with monsters or start and end your turn in their locations. Just beware, the closer you are to them, the more likely they will attack you in the second phase. 
As we'll see in that later phase, villagers can appear on the board, and any number of these can be in a space. And when you move from a space with them, you can take as many of them as you like with you, all the way to your final destination, or drop them off along the way as you go. This is important, because the monsters will hunt the villagers, and if too many of them die, you will lose the game, as we'll see later. To further help the villagers, you can also use this guide action, which moves one villager from your space to any adjacent one, or from any adjacent one to your space. Villagers also cannot move on water spaces or paths, and monsters do not affect their movement. At the top of each villager, they have the name of a safe location, and as soon as they are moved into that space, you remove them from the board, saving them from the monsters. The villager then rewards you with a perk, which you'll draw from this deck, and set face up in front of you. You can have any number of perks over the course of a game, and you should talk to the other players about the perks that you have. Because these can be played during any hero phase, not just your own, and when played, you'll then resolve their powerful effect here at the top. Also, you can play as many of these as you want during a turn, and they do not use up any of your actions. Getting back to the actions, next we have Pickup. This allows you to take any number of item tokens from your hero's space. We'll see how these are used later, but you put any you've collected in front of you. Now let's talk about the share action. All heroes in the same space with you may freely give or take any number of item tokens from each other. And this transfer of items doesn't have to involve the current player. I know in this game we set up for only two players, but let's just say we had three. The scientist might have performed the share action, but again, the exchange of items doesn't have to include her. Instead, these two players might give or take items from each other. The important thing is that the players who are sharing must be in the current player's space. Now we come to the advance action, where you will use the items that you've collected to work on fulfilling one of a monster's tasks. These are listed on the monster's sheet in the area labeled Advance 1. This represents the task you need to complete before you can defeat the monster. For example, these are the symbols for individual item tokens. So this tells us that to find the creature's lair, we must go to the camp location, which we marked with a token during the setup. And while there, we need to use either a yellow, red, or blue item, and then move this boat token to the next X that matches the color of the item we used. For example, if we used a red item, then we would just go to the very next X. So spending a blue item instead would be more efficient because we'd jump directly to here. Our goal is to get the boat all the way down the river to this X labeled Lair. Every item has a value here at the top, but that value doesn't matter in this case, only the color. To advance on Dracula's task, you need to understand this symbol, which means you can use any number of items at once that match this color, but their total numbered value must meet or exceed the value shown here. So what this is saying is you need to go to a space with a coffin token, which will be one of the spaces shown on this mat, for example, the dungeon, and then you need to use any number of red items, one or more, whose total value is six or higher. You then get to smash the coffin, flipping it over, and moving it to its spot on the mat. So for the dungeon, it would go here. In the game, unless instructed otherwise, anytime you use items, you place them into a discard pile beside the board. Next, we have the defeat action. Each monster has a unique way to defeat it, listed on their mat as defeat two. This number is important because you must always fully complete the advanced task before you can attempt to defeat a monster. In other words, you must smash all of the coffins before you attempt to defeat Dracula. And here it says that you must go to his space and then use any number of yellow items whose values total six or more. Once the boat marker is on the X marked as lair, you can defeat the creature by going to its space and using a yellow, red, and blue item. In this case, only the colors are important, their values do not matter. When a monster is defeated, you remove its figure from the game along with any components that are related to it. Now, some monsters, unlike Dracula, will actually have spaces on them for placing item tokens, and if so, once defeated, those tokens, instead of being removed from the game, are just sent to the item discard pile. If a defeated monster has the frenzy marker, then you move that to the next highest valued monster. Finally, we have the special action. 
This is only performed by heroes that have an ability listed on their badge labeled as special action. And you simply resolve its effect. You can do this as often as you like each turn, but each use costs you one action. If a hero has an ability that is not labeled as a special action, it doesn't cost an action to use it. Instead, you can take advantage of it anytime it would be relevant, as explained on its badge. Once a player has finished taking their actions, it's time to move to the monster phase, which is explained on the back of your reference. First, you'll draw a card from the top of the monster deck, and then you resolve its three parts from top to bottom, starting with this number, which is the number of random items you'll draw from the bag. You then place those in the locations indicated on their bottoms. Now, if you would ever need to draw an item from the bag and it's empty, just place all the items from the discard pile into the bag, mix it up, and then continue drawing as needed. Now you resolve the event portion of the card, which is found here in the middle, and I've placed another monster card out as well, just to show you a couple of different examples. These will either be gray and show this symbol, which indicates a villager, or be colored and relate to one of the monsters showing its symbol. Your reference will explain the meaning of each icon if you need a reminder. Cards that refer to villagers usually instruct you to take one of them from beside the board and add it to the location that's indicated. In this case, we're told to place Renfield at the docks. Events related to monsters also provide specific instructions related to them, which you'll follow. But if the event is for a defeated monster or one that's not in your game, then ignore the effect here. But either way, Next, go to the Monster Strike section at the bottom and resolve it. The symbols here tell you which monsters to activate, and you'll resolve them one monster at a time from left to right. This is the symbol for Dracula, so we resolve his monster actions first, which are shown here. This first value says how many spaces he moves towards the closest person, either hero or villager. So in this case, two spaces. Figures will always take the shortest path, and if there are multiple equal paths, the current player will decide which one they take. Also, if there are multiple characters equally close to the monster, it moves towards the closest hero rather than villager. Now, if there had also been a hero here, that means there are now two locations equally close to the monster with equally valid targets. In that case, again, because it's a tie, the current player will decide which target the monster goes after. In all cases where an event or a monster's movement could apply to a variety of targets equally, then the current player will always decide which of those targets to apply the effect to. When moving, as soon as a monster is in a space with a person, they immediately stop. And if they started their turn in a space with a person, they don't move at all, no matter what value is showing here. But then, after resolving the move step, if the monster is in a space with people, they attack just one of them. Now, if there was more than one person in the space, the monster will always attack a hero over a villager. And again, if there are multiple valid targets, let's say there were two heroes here, then again, the current player decides which of the valid targets will be attacked. With the target selected, you then roll a number of dice as indicated by this value. So two in this case. And you always ignore blank values, but for any of these symbols that you see, you'll resolve the monster's special power. This will be indicated on the monster's mat by this symbol. So, for example, Dracula's effect says that you then take the current hero and move them directly to Dracula's space. If you roll several dice showing this symbol and it's possible, then you resolve this effect once for each of those symbols rolled. If one of these hit symbols are rolled, the person targeted by the monster suffers a hit. And if the hit is against the villager, they are defeated and removed from the board. You then increase the terror rating by one on the track. And if this ever reaches the final space, all of the players lose. If hits go against a hero, you can choose to discard items that hero has. No matter the color or value, each one you remove cancels one hit. Now, if a hero doesn't have enough items to block all the hits, or they simply don't want to get rid of any of their items, then as long as they take even one hit, they are defeated. This causes the terror level to increase by one, and then you remove that hero from the board. At the start of that player's next turn, they will place their hero at the hospital location and take their turn as usual. But just note, being defeated does not cause your hero to lose any items or perks that they were holding. I should also point out that if the target of a monster is defeated, any extra hits it may have rolled are ignored. 
Now, after resolving a monster's strike, you then go to the next symbol in the row here and resolve that monster's strike. Anytime you see one for a monster that was never in the game, or for one that was defeated, you just ignore it. This, however, is the symbol for Frenzy, and it causes whichever monster has this token to attack, even if that monster already attacked during this phase. So, since Dracula does have the Frenzy token, he would resolve these symbols once more. Now, in this case, Dracula wouldn't move because he's already in a space with a person, but you would roll two dice and resolve their effects. Now, in the example we showed, the creature from the Black Lagoon wasn't activated. But let's pretend for a moment that it was because there's something I'd like to point out about it. This is the one monster who can move to water spaces and along water paths. So when it would move, you take that into consideration when determining who the closest target is. Also with the creature, its power, when activated, causes the boat marker to move backwards one space. And this means if it had been on the lair, then you will need to get it back here before you can attempt to defeat the creature. Now we mentioned earlier that certain monsters are considered frenzied as indicated by this token. If the game ever tells you to move the frenzy marker to the next monster, it means the one with the next highest frenzy value. Now if there are no monsters with a higher value when you would need to move it, then you place it on the lowest valued monster instead. Or, if there are no other monsters left in the game, the frenzy marker will always stay where it is. With that understood, once all the appropriate monsters have resolved their strikes, you send the monster card to a shared discard pile, and then the next player takes their turn. Turns will continue like this, going around and around the table in clockwise order, until either the players all win together by defeating all of the monsters, or they all lose together. And there are two different ways that the players can lose. One is if the terror token ever reaches this space. And the other is if you would need to draw a monster card, but the monster deck is empty. You've taken too long to save the village, and now everyone has fled. Now, as I had mentioned, there's a total of six monsters included in the game. And while we won't go over how each of them work here, check their pages in the rules to learn how they work when you're ready to face them. You can also play the game solo, and you'll find the rules for this here, which you can pause and read if you're curious, but otherwise, I'll leave them for you to discover on your own. And that's how you play Horrified. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.